Hello, I am Pastor Mark Just of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. We are located at 2528 King Edward Street. Our phone number at the office is 204-632-6911. You can email us at emmanueloffice at mymts.net. That's Emmanuel with an I. And you can also look us up on our website at emmanuelwinnipeg.ca. Emmanuel Lutheran Church is a member of Lutheran Church Canada. This is a video for Monday of Holy Week and due to some software issues I wasn't able to print out my order of worship like I normally do uh, but that is not the worst thing to deal with. Anyway, our order of service is going to be our order of service that we've been consistently doing for these midweek and services like that, uh, evening prayer. The sign of the cross may be made by all in remembrance of the holy baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being worshiped with pure voices forever. O Son of God, giver of life, universe now proclaims your glory. The Thanksgiving for Light. Blessed are you, O God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. For you are merciful, and, you're, and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 141. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let the prayer, let my prayer rise before you as incense, lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let my, let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers. But my eyes are turned to you, O Lord, in you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises. The church on earth, the whole heavenly host, may glorify you forever. Amen. Our psalm is Psalm 36, verses 5 through 10. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. Man and beast you save, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God! The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life, in your light do we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, 
in your righteousness to the upright of heart. For our hymn, it's 434, and this hymn is not as familiar to me as far as melody is concerned, and I didn't want to take... I didn't want to uh, hurt the hymn by any means, uh, because the text is what is important, and we can speak it together. Lamb of God, pure and holy, who on the cross did suffer, ever patient and lowly, thyself to scorn didst offer. offer. All sins thou borest for us, else had despair reigned o'er us. Have mercy on us, O Jesus, O Jesus. Lamb of God, pure and holy, who on the cross did suffer, ever patient and lowly, thyself to scorn didst offer. All thou sins borest for us, else had despair reign over us. Have mercy on us, O Jesus, O Jesus. O Lamb of God, pure and holy, who on the cross did suffer, ever patient and lowly, thyself to scorn didst offer. All sins thou borest for us, else had despair reigned o'er us. Thy peace be with us, O Jesus, O Jesus. Our first reading for this Monday in Holy Week is taken from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 5 through 10. The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me. Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. Our second reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 11 through 15. When Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with human hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal salvation. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls, and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 23. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave him a dinner from him there, for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those rec reclining with him at the table. 
Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charged for the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, but because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took palm branches and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see, you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Here ends our Gospel reading. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. For our time of meditation, recently picked up a book, To Live with Christ, Daily Devotions um, by Bo Geertz. It's been translated by... Roar Erickson and Richard Wood. Monday of Holy Week. The text for this re this meditation is John chapter 18, verse 37. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Jesus was sentenced to death by the highest courts in the Jewish nation. But because land was occupied, the death sentence had to be confirmed by the occupying forces. So they marched off with the prisoner to Pontius Pilate. Like many other Roman officials, he was brutal and money-hungry, but he possessed good judgment. He sensed the envy and intrigue behind the sentence. After a short conversation with the prisoner, it was clear to him that the man standing before him was a harmless preacher of a new doctrine. Besides that, he was a Galilean. So Pilate could skirt the issue by referring the case to King Herod, who just happened to be in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Pilate touched upon truth for a moment. This strange prophet was a king in a kingdom that was not of this world. 
he'd come to witness about the truth, the truth about the purpose of life, the truth about God and us. Pilate had the opp opportunity to learn about this truth, but he didn't want to know it. He shrugged his shoulders and asked, what is truth? It wasn't a sincere question. He didn't really want to know. His statement was simply a way of dodging the issues. And Jesus was quiet. There's no sense in talking to a person who did not want to listen. This was also true of Herod. He appeared eager to meet Jesus. He'd heard of the remarkable deeds and wanted to see one of his miracles. But Herod wasn't open to the truth. He closed that door when John the Baptist was imprisoned. Herod had summoned the Baptist. It is written that he enjoyed listening to him. But when he did, he became hesitant because he knew the Baptist was right. Herod had taken his brother's wife, and this was against God's will. He could have repented if it wasn't so humiliating. So Herod put the matter off until that terrible day when he promised his daughter whatever she desired. The devious daughter went to her mother and received the horrific direction to ask for John the Baptist's head on a platter. Herod gave it to her. He silenced the voice that told him the truth, God's voice beckoning him to repentance and forgiveness. Herod didn't have anything against experiencing a great miracle. It's even possible that he was opening, open to considering God again, but you can't eliminate repentance and still expect to be with God. Herod wanted to avoid repentance, so Jesus had nothing to say to him either. So Herod had already heard God's truth. God was now silent. In closing, help me remember, Lord Jesus, that the day may come when you are silent. Help me always have room in my heart for the truth, even when it's humiliating, even when it hurts. Help me never use the excuse that there are different opinions, views, purposes, and religions. Our human errors cannot destroy your truth. You've come to us just so we would know the truth. Help us love and receive it. People speculate and wonder, but you know more than all the wisdom and thoughts of the prophets put together. Therefore, I ask you about the truth, because you are truth itself. We continue with the litany. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Reverend Timothy Teuscher, for all of the leadership in Lutheran Church Canada, for all pastors in Christ, and for all servants of the Church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Her Majesty the Queen, for our Prime Minister, for our Premier, and for our Mayor, for all public servants, for the government, and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, 
wrath, danger, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who mourn the death of loved ones, Olive Klimke, Ilvina Manweiler, Sandra Shalla, Nevaeh Dunkley, Waylon Becker, Reverend Ward Yunker, and Beverly Bellamere. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the shut-ins of Emmanuel, Elizabeth Lehman, Owen and Gail Mitchell, Sophie Klimke, Mary Lotz, Elfrida Hoffman, Caroline Lotz, Margaret Walker, and Lawrence Friesen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks and ask that you would continue to send your Holy Spirit to those who are celebrating a baptism anniversary this month. Declan Boji, Marilyn Deering, Marlene Connick, Natalie Kroll, Colby Eifert, Declan Ucourt, Cindy Coster, Lisa Hankammer, Donna Byrne, Patricia Urquhart, Andre Martin, and Dawson Challa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with you, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord, we pray. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty Lord and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. We conclude with hymn 430. My song is love unknown. 430. What 
what makes this rage and spite? He made the lame to run, he gave the blind their sight. Sweet, sweet injuries, yet they had these themselves displeased and against him rise. They rise and needs will have my dear Lord made a way. A murderer they save the prince of life they slay. Yet cheerful he to suffering goes, that he his foes from thence might free. In life no house, no home, my Lord on earth might have. In death no friendly tomb, but what a stranger gave. What may I say, and was his home? But mind the tomb wherein he lay. Here might I stay and sing. No story so divine. Never was love, dear king. Never was grief like thine. This is my friend. In whose sweet praise I all my days could gladly spend. Lord be with you during this celebration of Holy Week. If you have any questions or comments regarding this video, please call or text at 431-335-6219. The Lord bless and keep you. And go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.